Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Rifleman. I want to do one more benchtop video before we get back to shooting. I've been having a lot of fun taking various rifles over to the gun club and shooting them at steel gongs at various ranges, and people seem to enjoy uh, watching those videos. So I got to thinking a little while ago about whether or not I could successfully do that uh, with a handgun instead of a rifle. Same ranges, same everything, out to 240 yards. I don't know if I'll be successful or not, but it might be a fun exercise. I think it could make a fun video, uh, and I'll post it up whether I'm successful or not. But I started giving some thought as to which handgun I would take if I was going to do that, and there's really only one choice. I've got a pretty good selection of handguns. Um, but there's only one that I've shot at longer ranges uh, successfully. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's the only one I can really remember shooting at longer ranges, period. And that's my Ruger GP100. Um, I have shot this at 100 yards, and um, I had pretty good luck. My dad can attest to that. I was getting 5-inch, uh, sub-5-inch groups at 100 yards with this revolver during one range session. So it seems like a logical choice. 357 Magnum is a great cartridge for shooting at longer ranges. And uh, this is a pretty much a proven platform for me. But I need to make some modifications uh, to this revolver uh, before we can do that. And I bought something to affect that change. So let's move indoors onto the bench top and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is my Ruger GP100. As I said, I've had this about 15 or 20 years. I didn't buy it new. Um, when I bought it, it had already clearly had some work done to it. Um, and I've done some further work to it over the years. And it's a really nice shooter. Um, but when I purchased it, it didn't look like this. It looked like this. It had a two power loophole scope mounted in loophole rings on a B-square scope mount uh, clamped onto the barrel. Um, this one's not clamped down. It's just sitting on there for the moment. Um, and I am not one of the people who's going to trash B-square mounts. I know that a lot of people don't like the stuff that they do. And I know that some of the mounts that B-square made over the years didn't really work all that well. Um, this one's no exception to that. But B-Square was very innovative. Um, they were really proactive in trying to find ways uh, to help people mount optics on their firearms without drilling and tapping holes in their guns. And um, I've had some B-Square mounts that actually worked pretty well. Um, and actually, this scope mount works pretty well. Um, when it's clamped down... Well, first of all, it basically just slides onto the barrel. That's the biggest problem. Um, there's a key that goes into this slot. It's right here, little hardened steel key that goes into this slot behind the rear sight. That's what bears up against the rear sight, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then there are three cap head Allen screws that go into... Um, the mount, and once this is slid onto the barrel and you tighten down these three screws, the mount simply clamps down onto the barrel. And this little key, which fits through the mount in behind the uh, front sight here, is all that's absorbing all of the recoil. Um, because of course, when the gun fires, uh, the pistol wants to go to the rear, the scope and the base want to stay where they are, and so the natural uh, force wants to pull the barrel out of this barrel channel. And this little key is the only thing stopping it from doing that. And this system actually works pretty well. Uh, this mount holds zero. Um, it allows the revolver to be very accurate. Um, and... I'm generally uh, fairly pleased with the mount so long as I'm shooting 38 special ammo only. 
but the big problem is the GP100 isn't a 38 special revolver. It's a 357 Magnum revolver. And the big problem with this mount is when you start putting full house 357 Magnum loads in here and shooting the revolver, uh, this mount starts disassembling itself very quickly. Um, under recoil, this little wedge or key that, that works so nicely when you're shooting 38 Special starts to come loose. It'll eventually end up sliding out the side. Um, I lost the original front sight. Uh, the original front sight, or actually this front sight, on the GP100 is held in place by a spring-loaded plunger in here. And this is a great system if you want to change sights out rather quickly. Um, but it's not a very solid um, backer uh, for a little wedge to withstand the recoil of full house 357 Magnum loads. Um, and so as a result, I eventually took this mount and scope off and I put them in a plastic bag and I threw them in a desk drawer. And I just said, okay, I'm just going to shoot my GP100 this way. This is fine. Um, and I've enjoyed it very much like that for well over a decade at this point. But of course, every time I would open up my desk drawer and see the B-square mount and the loophole scope in there, I would think, what a waste. I mean, this loophole scope, when it was brand new, probably cost, uh, the B-square mount wasn't very expensive, but the loophole scope probably cost damn near as much as the revolver brand new. Uh, just recently, I looked at loophole pistol scopes online, and the cheapest one you can get is north of $500. So um, it seems like a real waste for this to just be sitting around in a drawer. Uh, now, I became aware a little while ago of another no gunsmithing uh, scope mount for the GP100, which makes use, it again makes use of the, uh, the front sight, but the front sight gets removed completely and a hardened steel block gets installed here with two screws and the rear sight gets removed and this elevation screw here gets taken out and that's the third point. So you actually end up with your zero gunsmithing uh, scope mount screwed down to the top of the uh, revolver in three places. And it seems like a much better system. I've done some research. People generally have only good things to say about it. It's made by a guy named Jack Wiegand right here in Pennsylvania, I think in Hilltop, Pennsylvania, if I recall correctly. Um, let me look at the package. Oh, Mountaintop, Pennsylvania. I just got my package in the mail uh, yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, let's clear this stuff out of here. And let's take a look at what I received in the mail. So this is what came in the mail. There was a little cardboard tube and a return slash exchange form. Um, Wigan seems to have uh, pretty good customer service from what I've heard. Um, hopefully I'm not going to have to use those forms at all. So we've got a little cardboard tube here. It uh, says what the product is inside. And there's an admonition here. There's some, there are instructions inside here, which I'll show you, but there's some warnings here to degrease uh, all the screws and use thread locker on them uh, to keep the mount tied down. And it also says here, if you encounter a problem, stop and give us a call or email for technical assistance. So uh, hopefully I won't have to do that either. So let me just get the end out of this cardboard tube. Okay, that goes in there pretty tightly. Set that aside. And here is our scope mount. And there are mounting instructions, I believe, rolled up inside here. Ooh. Anything else in there? Nope. And this looks like, yes, pretty detailed mounting instructions. And what you get in your package is your scope base rail. 
It's marked with Wigan's logo on there, and it identifies it as a GP100. And they call their mounting system uh, mounting system Wigatini, obviously a take on Picatinny. It is a Picatinny rail. Um, earlier versions of this mount uh, used a, a weaver type rail, so it would have it would have had uh, wider spaced notches. But Picatinny is nice because it it does afford you the uh, ability to mount a bunch of different types of optics on there. And I took a close look at this uh, yesterday uh, when I first took it out of the package, and it's really very nice. It's nicely machined. Everything's nice and clean. The only thing I noticed, and probably this wouldn't even uh, occur to a lot of people, there are some tiny little burrs in the bottom here, which absolutely don't affect anything. I am going to take a little keyhole file and just clean those up ever so slightly, just because that's the kind of obsessive compulsive person I am. Um, and But frankly, that doesn't bother me at all. I would far rather uh, clean those up myself uh, than pay extra uh, for one of Mr. Wiegand's employees to do it. So uh, overall, it's very beautifully finished. It looks like it's been tumbled or stonewashed or something. Um, there's a black version of this as well. Obviously, I got the the uh, plain aluminum version to match my stainless steel uh, revolver. The black version is clearly black anodized, so I'm assuming that this is just clear anodized over uh, the raw aluminum. So, and then there's a small bag here with mounting hardware. Um, there's the little block that installs that uh, the pieces screw into, and there's some mounting screws. So, the thing comes with instructions, and Mr. Wiegand has his own YouTube channel, and he has a very detailed and thorough video on how to install this scope base. I could not possibly do a better job than him, and I don't want to make my video any longer than it needs to be. Uh, so if you want to see this uh, mount being installed, I would encourage you to go over to Mr. Wiegand's YouTube channel and check it out. I'm going to go ahead and install this, and we'll take a look at it on the revolver. Okay, so there is our Wiegand... GP100 scope mount, all mounted up. We've got one cap head screw here and uh, two up there. These two thread into the replacement front sight block. This one screws into the top of the frame where the elevation screw was for the rear sight. And I can just tell you from looking at the machining and looking at the finish, I have uh, a great deal more confidence in this than I ever did in uh, this extruded aluminum thing from, and to be sure, this is aluminum also, but it's all billet machined. This is an extruded aluminum thing with minor uh, machining. And again, if you just wanted to shoot 38 specials, uh, you wanted to use this for informal uh, target shooting or something with uh, 38 wad cutters, the B square would be fine, um, but I can just tell from looking at this thing, this is much, much more solid, and it's a lot nicer looking. I really dig these little cutouts under the rib. Um, it's just more nicely finished, and uh, another thing is it's going to place the scope closer to the bore of the barrel. Um, the idea behind the B-square was you left the iron sights in place and it was sort of a shoot-through design. You were supposed to be able to look through there and see your iron sights. And as a result, it set the scope up higher. Um, here, the scope's probably going to be a good quarter of an inch lower. And as we know, closer to the bore is uh, better for especially long-range accuracy. So... Um, I'm really looking forward to taking this thing out shooting. I probably could have mounted the scope right away, but being the anal guy that I am, uh, not only did it take me two hours to mount this, and you probably could do it in like 20 minutes. It's a pretty straightforward uh, process. But uh, not only did it take me two hours to mount this, but um, I'm going to let the thread locker on all three of these screws cure fully before I mount the scope 
I mean, I know that's insane overkill, but just looks like a really good mount. Of course, the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the tasting, and we'll have to take this thing out and shoot it and see how this holds up. But I can't imagine that it won't be a lot better than this. Uh, one thing that really inspires confidence is this massive uh, recoil lug on the back of the scope mount that bears against uh, the shoulder on the back of the frame. When you consider the fact that all of the recoil uh, with the B-square was exerted on this little steel shim, which just went in against the back of the front sight and then bore against the back of this skinny little slot. Yeah, I don't think that was nearly the setup that this is. So, uh, so I know I said in the intro that there was not going to be a shooting portion of this video, but clearly I'm a stinking liar. Uh, it's been a busy couple of days, uh, so I haven't really had a chance to finish editing the video and to upload the video. Um, and uh, obviously, the Loctite on my scope base has had plenty of time to cure, and I even managed to mount the scope. And I just so happened to have some 357 Magnum ammo in my truck. So although I don't have a proper pistol rest or anything, I thought, eh, Let's go out and we'll just check the zero on this. Um, the last time this Leupold M8 two power extended eye relief was uh, zeroed on a revolver, it was this revolver, but of course not with this scope base. So I wanna just see where we're shooting. Uh, we're not shooting at steel today, I'm just shooting at paper at 50 yards uh, to check the zero and if it needs some adjustment to do some adjustment. Um, I've got kind of a weird selection of ammo here. Um, I happen to have 357 ammo in my truck because uh, uh, my good friend Mike, thank you Mike, was kind enough to donate some to the cause. So I've got some PMC here, which is 158 grain jacketed soft points uh, made in South Korea like all PMC. Generally pretty decent ammo. Um, I think there's just about five or six rounds in there. And then there's a box of Corbon. Now these are kind of surprising. These are 110 grain jacketed hollow points. 110 grain is pretty light for 357. 357 generally starts around 125. Um, and so I would have thought that these would have been cooking along at a pretty good clip. But uh, the box says... Uh, 1,350 feet per second. Of course, I don't have a chronograph here, but these seem like they're going to be fairly lightweight loads. Uh, so, and also, the other reason I wanted to come out here is I just got a new audio recorder, and uh, I, for those of you who are interested, I got a Zoom H1N. The built-in stereo mics in the H1N, however, are very, very wind-sensitive, and it is, it's pretty breezy out here. Um, so I'm using a lav mic with a little fuzzy on it, and uh, I don't know how that's going to work, how that's going to, uh, how the, 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 the sound of the gunshot is going to translate, but we're going to give it a try and see what happens. It's, it's really quite breezy out here. Um, so let's start off with the PMCs. Um, I've got eight rounds of that. And uh, please forgive my shooting style. As I said, I don't have a proper pistol rest here. So I'm going to do the best I can with a couple of 4x4s wrapped up in a old towel. Not that anybody's interested, but this towel was in my parents' bathroom when I was a kid in the 1970s. And for some reason, it's still around. Fieldcrest really made good towels back in the day. Um, all right, let's see what happens. I do have the noise limiter on, turned on on the, on the recorder, so I'm very interested to see, especially since I'm using a lav mic, uh, how the sound translates. And I am trying to check for accuracy, so uh, I'm going to be shooting single action here.
Yeah, these PMCs are no slouch. That's for damn sure. Um, they should be helping to seat the scope base. I think that might have been it. I wasn't counting, unfortunately. That's definitely it. Yep. So those are some pretty sassy loads, I will have to say. I'm going to take a walk down to the... I'm going to take a walk down to the target and see what that looks like. So I can't see it from here. Okay, so that group at 50 yards was dead on left to right. Um, it's about three inches high, which, what is that, six minutes of angle. I am not going to make any changes to that because I intend, uh, when we get out here to shoot steel, to shoot at longer ranges. So, um... Until I, I, I just wanted to pretty, make sure I would be on paper at 100 yards, and I think I will be. So let's shoot a couple more of these PMCs. I've only got two left in the box, so let me shoot those, and then I'll have a box of empty brass to reload. Quite a bit of muzzle flash here. I should be able to get some good uh, stills, I hope, off the video. Yeah, those are pretty spicy. Now we'll shoot these Corbons. Well, we'll shoot a cylinder full of these Corbons just to see. Um, again, these are 110 grain at 1350, it said. Um, it's an interesting thing on the bottom of the box. I will read to you. I mostly want to shoot these because I want to see what the muzzle flash is like. And then I think we're going to wrap this up because I've got things i got to do this afternoon. It's interesting, the bottom of the box says, uh, Corbon high-velocity ammunition is precision manufactured to extremely close tolerances using only brand new components. Corbon's specially formulated powders deliver the highest velocities with the lowest amount of muzzle flash. Well, if you believe what's written on the box, they're not delivering the highest velocities because 1,350 feet per second is... I think pretty slow for a 110 grain jacket at hollow point. But I'm mostly interested uh, to find out about muzzle flash because we've obviously had a fair amount of muzzle flash with the PMC ammo. So I'm just going to shoot a cylinder full of this. I think I'm, I'm pretty much done checking the zero. Um, so the next time you see me here at the range, we'll be shooting at steel. I don't know if it'll be with this or with a rifle. Uh, it probably won't be this weekend. we got a big northeaster coming in. I'm sure some of you, if you're in the Midwest, are already dealing with that. So I'm just going to shoot this cylinder, and then I'm going to edit this video, get it posted, and get to work on the next video. And when I post that video, I hope to see each of you here then. Yeah, that's quite a bit lighter. It's not insignificant, though, and I can definitely see muzzle flash. So uh, we'll see what it looks like in the video. But hopefully I'll do a lot better when I'm shooting off of a real pistol rest. This is... Not bad, but it's still pretty shaky.
and it's cold and I'm slightly shivering. That'll do it. All right. Later, guys.